think Mark Holmes, the son of John Holmes, has ever had Stephen Jones on four times on his show? Who in the world is Mark Holmes? Will somebody please tell me? By the way, back here, and so before we start this video, I gotta get this whole thing out of the way. Mark Holmes is my dad. Well, good Wednesday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here for my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great hump day. And I hope that you're getting over the hump, that you're humping and you're doing whatever you do on hump day. The Dallas Cowboys are embarking on the last week they have at Oxnard. And they're burning up the place. Literally, the Dallas Cowboys had a fire last night at the hotel. Fortunately, it was one of the vacant rooms and stuff. No injuries reported. No damage as far as the Dallas Cowboys and things like that. Just another scare. Just something else. And more drama for us with the Dallas Cowboys. Now, this, my friends, is probably going to be the most important week of the Dallas Cowboys season in shaping what the 2024 season is going to be about. This is guys on the bubble, on the roster, and figuring out who it is you're going to have to cut, as well as going around because it's not like it used to be where you cut down three times before you got to your final roster. Because in today's NFL, because of what happened with COVID, that you've got your 53-man uh, roster, and then you've got your 15 players that are on the practice squad, and the way that you can use injured reserve is a way of hiding and stockpiling players. And so Jerry Jones coming out yesterday and saying, you know, Trey Lance is going to be on our 53-man roster, which, you know, makes sense because – you don't want to lose him. You know, that's what happened to us basically with John Ridgway. They put him on waivers figuring they could hide another player, and Washington was smart enough to go ahead and grab him. Yeah, that's a guy I wish we had right now on our defensive line too. But be that as it may, of course you're going to put Trey Lance on your 50-man roster, 53-man roster, because if you don't, somebody's going to snag him up because quarterbacks are a premium. And you look at guys like Daniel Jones out there, and you say, well, damn, Trey Lance looked better than Daniel Jones. But then again, who's not looking better than Daniel Jones at the moment? Now, again, it was just one preseason game. Coming back from an ACL, he's probably just rusty. And, you know, Giants fans, you got nothing to worry about. You know, even though Bet US has his over and under for touch deep passes for 15 and a half. 15 and a half. The lowest in the division. Just saying. Just saying. saying to, to put that in perspective, Dak Prescott's over and under is 29 and a half. Hmm. Interesting to say the least. Now, again, you don't want to have a situation where we let go, say, a wide receiver like a Danny Amendola who had a really good career. So this is tough. This is a lot of valuation that's going on here. And this is, for the players, their last shot to really get themselves on to the team. So hopefully that will work out and the Cowboys will make the right moves. Now, we do need to go ahead and deal with the elephant in the room, of course, which is C.D. Lamb's contract. And this is where... This is where Adam Schefter was commenting about it last night. I want to put it in his own words here, and we'll get back on it. Jerry Jones said that promising, progressing, you know, he, he's been doom and gloom some of the days. I'm not in a rush. It'll happen. You know, thank God he's not here so he doesn't get hurt and this, that, and the other, um, so on. But here's what, per Adam Schefter, and you can take with it what you will. Last year of his rookie deal is reported looking for money in the Justin Jefferson neighborhood. That's 35 million a year. Here's his head coach Mike McCarthy about the situation today. It's New One Sports Center. Well, I think just like anything, you, you have to have a plan. Uh, and, you know, and it's it's something that we reconvene every single night. You know, uh, first as a staff and and, and more so uh, myself and the coordinators. So yeah, yeah, we you know we have we have a plan to to work 
you know, each and every day. So, and and we make those adjustments accordingly. So, and uh, when CD does come back, we'll we'll, we'll adjust and and uh, make sure that we're ready to go. You know, but right now we're we're preparing the other guys. Our senior NFL insider Adam Schefter joins us now for so much more. Honestly, Mike McCarthy could have been a number of coaches that are talking about contract situations that still need to be resolved. Yeah. So walk us through some of them, but start with CD. Well, L, the important thing today is that the Cowboys owner Jerry Jones said that there are promising talks between the Cowboys and CD Lamb and that there's some optimism that the two sides can figure out. He said he didn't want to speak for CD Lamb, but this is consistent with the tone that most people around the league expect that these two sides will be able to figure out a solution. But the fact of the matter is it is Tuesday, August 20th, and they still don't have a deal right now. That's got to be disappointing. Dak Prescott continues to head into the last year of his contract. He's got the leverage. And while the Cowboys have spoken to him, this would be a tough deal to get done anytime soon with all the leverage that Dak has. And so it looks like he will likely head into the start of this season heading into the last year of his contract. The big question is whether he'll be throwing the football to C.D. Lamb. And again, I think most people believe that Dallas and its star wide receiver will figure out a solution that will get Lamb back in the fold and on the field in time for opening mm -hmm. day against the Cleveland Browns with Tom Brady in the booth. Oh, unbelievable. He's a linchpin in that offense, too. Certainly they need him. Cowboys, as I mentioned, are not the only team that are dealing with star players not and some extension one. talk. Here's 49ers coach Kyle Shanahan Seems like they're getting Brandon together. Ayuk and Trent Williams. Any uh, sense on movement with Brandon Ayuk or Trent Williams? <laughs> Zero Nothing. updates. Nothing's changed. <laughs> Short, sweet, and to the point. Yeah, nothing, you tell, tell us, Shefty, where do things stand? Start nothing with has changed. Well, nothing's changed per Kyle Shanahan. Right. But the fact of the matter is the 49ers continue to talk to Brandon Ayuk to see if there is a solution to get him signed to the long-term contract to keep him in San Francisco. The two sides have been unable to create a breakthrough. Again, we are now under three weeks away from the Monday night regular season opener against the Jets. So there days. does seem to be some urgency from both sides. And the 49ers have been focused on Brandon Ayuk, which it certainly sounds like has impacted the amount of energy and effort that they've been able to devote to their Pro Bowl left tackle, Trent Williams, who also continues to hold that at training camp, seeking a new deal. Now, for a 36-year-old tackle to miss camp, that's not the worst thing in the world. Sure. The 49ers will want him ready on opening night against the Jets, but the question is, can they get a deal done in time to get him back in the fold? So. The business with Ayuk has taken away from some of the attention mm -hmm. on Williams, but the fact of the matter is two huge question marks with that Monday night opener now 20 days away. Two huge question marks for them as well. So at least we're not the only team that's dealing with this. You know what the funniest thing here is? Is I hear, well, people say, well, you can't pay Dak, you can't pay CD, you know, you got Micah Parsons, you know, and then you're going to have to, you're going to have to turn around and pay, you know, um, you're going to have to pay Deron Bland back there. You're going to have to pay Jake Ferguson back there. You know, you may have to pay Jalen Tober. You're going to have to pay Tyler Smith. You know, yeah, it, 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 and it's like, wait a minute. So let me see if I get this straight. Our biggest problem is that we have drafted and have good players, or should I say great players, that we have to pay and keep. Is that is is that the problem? Would you rather us have ass ass players that can just walk? I'm just saying that to me, in the grand scheme of things, it's like I would rather have that problem than to be the New York Giants. How about that? I would rather be the Dallas Cowboys that are saying, "How are we going to pay Dak Prescott?" than to be the New York Giants who paid Daniel Jones and may not make it through the season as their starter and have no plan to replace him. I would rather be the Dallas Cowboys that look and say, you know what, we drafted an all-pro offensive lineman in Tyler Smith and we have to pay him, as opposed to them drafting one in the first round and he sucks and goes elsewhere. I would rather be the Dallas Cowboys that have to pay a Deron Bland, who's now in the Pro Football Hall of Fame as the most pick sixes in the history of the NFL, as opposed to getting burnt like toast. Guys, 
we are blessed to have as many players as we do. Oh, my God. Micah Parsons. You know what? That guy, he's a bum because he's got a podcast. And if he gets what, nine and a half sacks this year, he'll join a, no, a group of like four people ever to start their career with 50 sacks. Okay, yeah, that's a bum. That, that, you know what? I like those kind of problems. Those are the kind of problems I want to have, that we just have too many really good players that we have to figure out a way to pay. And if the Cowboys are having a hard time figuring out these contracts, and since they're dealing with so much money, to me, I don't know. I don't know. It may be advantageous to go ahead and say, since we're talking about, you know, a quarter of a billion dollars for, say, Dak Prescott's contract or, you know, and, and things like that. And talking about, you know, 100 plus million dollars on on CD Lamb and so on, that maybe it might be advantageous for me to make a hire or two for some people who can figure out how to do contracts and maneuver the cap, much like other teams. Because I hear people say things like, well, New Orleans, you know, they're going to be $80 million over the cap. Well, guess what? New Orleans every year is over the cap like that. They're usually in the worst cap shape of any team in the NFL. Yet, it hasn't precluded them from signing their players and bringing in free agents. Now, I'm not going to say that it's it's led to them winning the Super Bowls in recent years, but just pointing out that if you want to be able to do things and bring your players back, you know, when you look at San Francisco, San Francisco has, you know, brought in free agent quarterbacks. Now they're going to have to deal with Brock Purdy's, of course, but they're trying to find ways to hold on to all their stars, and they have a lot, and they continue to bring in more talent. You can't look at the Cowboys in their situation and say, you know, they just can't bring in anybody. If you want to do something, okay, maybe you do, okay, it's figuring out how to budget, how to rob Peter to pay Paul, to finagle the system, to be able to do what you need to do. I have to do that every day of my life, is to figure out what is going to be paid first, where I'm going to get the money to, you know, plaster the walls here at the red brick house or to get the lifts so that way I can redo the chimney. You figure it out and manage the money so that way you're able to do things. The Cowboys, unfortunately, with this whole mentality of deadlines make deals get done, keeps screwing them. The deal with Randy Gregory, letting him go out in free agency. Thank God it ended up not working out because the Cowboys were ready to sign him to that $75 million. Had he said okay with that rider, we would have been screwed on that contract. You waited till the last minute for D-Law to get his thing done, trying to penny pinch and say, you know, we, we thought we had a deal for $19 million. You know, he wants twenty one. Well, you ended up paying him the twenty one, and you sabotaged the season because he didn't get his shoulder operated on. You kept saying, Zeke who, we're not going to reset the market, which was about, I think, $14 million at the time, and you guys blew it out the water. And he missed most of training camp and came in out of shape. So don't look and be mad at the players. Be mad at the game that the Joneses are running. That's where the fault lies. And we keep getting mad at these players that are out here that are actually the ones performing. You may not like Dak Prescott. You may not believe in Dak Prescott, but take a look around the NFL and see what you get in quarterbacks. And all these guys that you say, oh, I'll take this guy, you know, Justin Herbert, I'll take Trevor Lawrence, or I'll take Baker Mayfield. Those guys aren't having any more success than the Dallas Cowboys. They're not. They're not. And those other teams, they're doing things like Let's surround the quarterback with more talent. We don't do that other than the draft and free agency bottom tier. So 
that is what it is. But this week, of course, is very, very consequential. And I do like some of the moves that have been made, you know, bringing in uh, Jordan Phillips. Jordan Phillips, who basically is talking about um, he's not worried about his statistics. I got it backwards because I actually thought Mozzie said this. But Jordan Phillips said, you know, basically, if my linebacker is a pro bowler or all pro and gets all the stats and stuff like that, then I've done my job and I feel good about that. And that's the mentality that you have to have as a defensive lineman. And when I look at this from the outside going in, potentially our defensive line in front seven is much better and much improved from where it was last year. And I do like the things that Mike Zimmer is instilling on this defense that I think will pay dividends. My only thing is right now is we need to stop playing around with the whole C.D. Lamb situation and get him in camp. Time is running out, guys. Time is very, very short. And we need to have C.D. Lamb in here so we can get some work together before week one against the Cleveland Browns. But then again, this is the Joneses. This is what they do. And as we roll on out of here, I want to uh, I want to focus on something else this morning, too. And Eagle fans are saying, why are you worried about our team? Focus on your own team. Well, here's the thing is, what happens with your team has a direct correlation with the Cowboys. Now, we hear that everybody says that the Eagles are loaded and this, that, and the other, and even though they got the two new coordinators, that everything's going to be great, that Kellen Moore is a genius, and the only reason why Dak Prescott was playing at the level that he was because it was Kellen Moore, even though Kellen Moore did not do too well last year with the Chargers and a, a more talented quarterback in Justin Herbert, as they said. Here's the thing that's kind of interesting to me, and I think I pointed this out before a few years ago, is... Typically, typically, what happens to teams that lose the Super Bowl? Typically, unless it's the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs were more the exception than the rule. But teams losing the Super Bowl start stepping down as far as their production goes. For example, the 2014 Seattle Seahawks, after losing the Super Bowl, they were 12-4 and four that year. They were 10-6, 10-5-1, and 9-7. And have not gotten back to that pinnacle. It's just the, it's the natural attrition because what happens is people look at your team and say, oh, well, I want that coordinator. Oh, I want those players. Your players want to get paid and so on. And sometimes players get complacent. It's just the natural tendency of it. And also, too, you played more games than anybody else, and you have less time to heal. If you're playing the Super Bowl, middle of February, as opposed to other teams that ended up going out and being done with the season on, you know, first week in January, you got an extra five, six weeks to get your body together. Panthers, 2015. 15 and 1, 6 and 10, 11, 5, 7 and 9. The trend is going downhill. The Falcons, 2016, 11 and 5, 10 and 6, 7 and 9, 7 and 9. Um, New England. Now, New England was 13 and 3, lost the Super Bowl, but they are more the exception than the rule, at least this one was. They went back the next year, they won the Super Bowl. And they were 12-4 and four the next year and then ended up being 7-9. and nine. But have not been anywhere near that level. You see New England still. They kind of still had Tom Brady there the next year and then after that going downhill. The Rams. Now, the Rams are an interesting one because they were doing that same thing, going downhill 13-3, and three, um, losing the Super Bowl to New England. And then they were nine and seven and ten and six, but then they went all in. They went ahead, you know, got Matthew Stafford and you know Namik and Sue and all those guys, and then they won the Super Bowl. So that again is another one that's kind of more the exception than the rule. So I'm not going to say that it doesn't happen, but typically a team that loses the Super Bowl starts a downward trajectory. So the question is, is and, and, I'm, and it's funny because 
I've said this thing a couple of times before, and people are like, you're just a hater. The Eagles are loaded. But now this question is actually being posed out there now. So let's listen to this and see what ESPN's thoughts are on the Eagles if they are going to be going downhill. Lewis has said a statement, and he will tell us if it's ridiculous or not. Mm. Lewis, mm. if mm. I said that the Cowboys were sabotaging themselves by the way that they're handling the C.D. Lamb situation, is that ridiculous? No, that's not ridiculous at all. I mean, we, we know what he means to this offense. We know, like, look, general managers all the time sit there and they grind their gears about the people who they're going to make long-term investments in and whether or not guys can be trustworthy. Once you pay them, will their production go down? They they developed CD. They drafted him. We know he had a 1,000 more receiving yards than the next closest wide receiver on their team last year. They're not going anywhere without him, and they're sending a bad message by this not getting done. I don't know what CD is asking for, but I'm telling you this. This would be pri- – I would be basically like, what is this going to take? Because this, set, this sends a tone, and it sets a tone for the Dallas Cowboys, and they mm-hmm. are sabotaging their season the longer this goes along. Let's stay in the NFC East with the number two overall pick. Jaden Daniels will have a better rookie year yeah. than Caleb Williams. Is that ridiculous? No, that's not ridiculous at all. And you, you know Jaden's story well. I mean, from Arizona State to LSU, and the work that this young man has put in to put himself in this position. Would you say, you know, man for man, that Chicago has better weaponry than Washington at this point? Yeah, you would. I'm going to bet on the individual here, and that's no slight whatsoever to Caleb Williams because I think he's going to have a fantastic season. This is going to be fun to watch, but this guy is unique. Uh, has a unique skill set to go ahead and meet this challenge in Washington. And by every report that comes out of there, he has done nothing but go ahead and surpass every expectation they've had of him from the day he stepped foot in that building. Staying in the NFC East with the team that's trying to rebound, the Eagles will miss the playoffs. Is that ridiculous? Yeah, that, that's ridiculous. I, I just don't see how, like, they would have to actively talk about sabotaging. They'd have to actively sabotage themselves. This football team really is just too good. They have too many people, too many weapons, too many guys who have won at a high level for them to go ahead and mess this up. The only thing that will derail them, I believe, is injury. I don't think any of the other stuff that happens, you know, off the field when it comes to personalities and relationships, I don't think it could get so bad to where this team will miss miss the playoffs. In that division, don't see it. ESPN's Bill Barnwell released a list of five teams that he thinks will decline in 2024. The Pittsburgh Steelers, New York Giants, Baltimore Ravens, Eagles, and Browns. But let's focus on the Eagles, Mike T. Two years ago, this team was a series away Hmm. from winning the Super Bowl, and now they're talking about this team taking the decline from a year that already finished badly. How do you see the Eagles' chances of stacking up against teams like the 49ers, the Lions, and the Packers in the NFC. RC, I like it a lot. I, I disagree with Bill Barnwell, and here's why. When you watch Jalen Hurts a year ago, he just seemed like he was not the same player. I think he was playing with injuries, and as Hembo has reminded us, no quarterback has rushed the ball more over the last three years than Jalen Hurts, and I think what Saquon Barkley does, guys, not only running the ball, but receiving, he's gonna take a lot of that load off of Jalen Hurts, so Way more than Kellen Moore, in my opinion. I think Saquon Barkley is a hugely consequential acquisition. And I think the Eagles can stand toe-to-toe with the other powers in the Mm. NFC. Lou, looking at this roster, how do you feel you could even look at this team and not think to yourself they should be better this year than last? Yeah, I don't don't think you can, Ryan. I mean, I think the only thing that, that derails them, really, in a substantial way to where they can't win their division or be a contender in the NFC is injury. And that's not something that really you can forecast. I don't don't think you can sit here and go, well, this team is set for a decline because I'm going to predict that a certain number of guys aren't going to be available because of injuries. We don't know how that's going to play out. I just don't see it getting to the point where internally Nick Sirianni is not able to, to show enough leadership to say, hey, Vic, Kellen, this is how we need to keep it going. This is how we need to maintain the relationship with Jalen Hurts. This is how we need to run this offense. This is how defensively, what I expect from a head coach and perspective, we need to do this thing. And I'm going to let you all go do your thing now because we understand. Look, once the game starts, it's big showing the defensive side. Kellen's going to be calling the plays and all. But look, this team is just too talented. It just is. And these guys have won. Just two years ago, this is one of the best teams in football now. And it's not like materially they've they've taken a drop. 
in any really position area of, in twi- of, of in real 20. importance to where you would sit there and go, yeah, I forecast them kind of, mm. you know, falling off the earth or falling off the map here and not challenging for a playoff spot. I, I just, there's just no way. I, I just, I'd be, if that happened, yeah, we'd have to have a whole show about that. <laughs> a whole we, show. You're going to have a whole show about that. Yeah, um, I would say it was one terribly timed call that cost them that Super Bowl. Mm. Jalen Hurts outplayed Patrick Mahomes. Um, when I think about this team and the fact that there was all this disconnect, friction between mm-hmm. the head coach, quarterback, OC, DC, everything was a mess. Things were super tense in the building. And yet they started the season 10-1. and one. Yes, they completely fell off after that. Um, but when I think about, when I look at Jalen Hurts, I don't care what anybody says, he did not look healthy last year. Um, so when I think about Kellen Moore and the production that Dak had in Dallas with Kellen Moore as his OC, Saquon Barkley, to Mike's point about Saquon Barkley, not just being the playmaker he is, but also taking some of the physical workload from Jalen, but also setting up more opportunities for Don- Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown. I'm sorry. I have a hard I'm time sorry. seeing the Eagles completely... Um, falling off yet again because they started the season 10 and one, despite having all those issues. Yeah, I think. Well, we're going to find out real soon. And I'm going to tell you, (laughs) it better not happen for you Eagles. I'm biding my time for the Dan Salio show. We'll see if I get bumped today by, you know, uh, Butch Davis or uh, something like that, or Philly 500 shows up and things and all that. But you know, I'm always there, anytime, anywhere, any place. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, I appreciate each and every one.